Shabbat shalom to all of you. We are in Mishpatim, and we have a new life in our midst. That is wonderful. Uh, the, this portion is the continuation of the giving of the Torah, of Jitro, receiving the Torah. But one thing that one, constantly I want to remind you, only for the sake of understanding, Torah is not chronological. You know? En meuha, en mukdan be meuhar be Torah. This is a very interesting that the, even the rabbi they tell you that the Torah doesn't follow a chronological, but it's more pedagogical. It's about teaching. Here, Mishpatim, do you remember that I mentioned to you the, the giving the Ten Commandments or the Ten Words? That was divided in three areas. Misvot, Hukim, and Mishpatim. And I told you that the Misvot is the commandments and the a direct relationship with the Creator. Because the Ten Commandments speak to the individual and the individual to the nation. Okay? That, this is the way that the, the revelation of God is always is individual to give it to the community. The second one is hukim. Hukim means ordinances. And they do not have a logical explanation, you know, but they have a reason. And when we start understanding, we start having a better relationship with the Creator, and even we are a fellow man, we are neighbors. And the third division is called mishpatim, what is the name of this parasha? can be translated as the laws, as many people say, or can be tr translated as the social ordinances, or can be translated as the judgments. There's many translations. I like more social ordinances. Why? Because it's a relationship of men with men. You know? The man with his neighbor, the man with the with the, the next person to to him or to her, is is a human relationship, social relationship. Remember this: the Creator gives us an order, in order that we can develop a relationship with everybody. For example, if we do la shon hara. You know, the evil tongue. We are damaging our neighbor. But damaging our neighbor, we are damaging our creator. Why? Because each one of us who has been made to his likeness and image. And for the reason, at the end, every fault that we have ended against the creator. You need to Understand this procedure that the Creator has given us. But here is also last week I mentioned to you that the Torah was given to us, knowing Israel, for one reason very special, to give it the universality for everybody. And secondly, was not enforced by the Creator to Israel. Israel needed to accept it on his own will. Okay, that's what I call a behirah of she. Very important free will. I'm going to be talking about it a little bit. And here, look at how it starts. He says, Ba ele hamishpatim asher tasim lefanechem. Lefanechem. And I'm giving you this social ordinances in front of you. Okay? Uh, I am going to take this in front of you, the final him. I mean, each one of you, when Moses Raveno is going to uh, tell them, you know, to take it, each one of us, we need to receive it or no? It's our decision, not the creator's decision. Look at how much. 
importance the Creator, blessed be His name, put on us. How much trust? He gives us the freedom. And give us uh, the freedom, you know, the, the, uh, given the, uh, that here is a, a, a freedom to act in our own. She's going to talk, is, the first stanza that she's going to talk is about slavery. And we need to understand why slavery in this very pedagogical treatise. What is the first commandment you remember? Who brought you out of slavery. I am the God who brought you out of slavery. Mm-hmm. And I do not want to become a slave of anybody. Mm-hmm. Including the creator. Mm-hmm. You know, there are many religions that they teach you, oh, you need to be a slave of God. And you feel more, uh, I would say, more spiritual because I slave myself to God. Right. <laughs> Boy, everybody says, wow, this guy really is spiritual. You know? Totally the contrary. Our God, blessed vision, is giving us the opportunity to relay with him. To have a relationship. And I would be a little bit wild to say this. Almost an equal relationship. Your relative. <laughs> In the same that he's giving us the opportunity that we can talk to him. Even, you know what? We can lose our temper with him. And he won't send the thunder over our head and cut us in half. How many people say, oh, no, he is going to kill me. But it's, ba- it's based on mutual respect. And the thing that he's going to give it to us is going to talk about unity, no uniformity. All of us, we are co-equals in the value of him, in front of him. But uh, we are not the same. Each one of us is different. And he, as a heavenly father, he knows his children. And he knows exactly like a mother who can smell their children from far away and listen to them from far away. You know, mothers, they never cut the umbilical cord, you know? All the mothers are still hooked to their children. You know, they can smell it, they can hear, and they know. Even they know when they are lying, they know when they're doing, when they're, when they're doing, telling you the truth. You don't need to say anything to your mother. The mother, <laughs> they already know, even before. You can say, it's a unique capability of women. We as men, we don't have it, by the way. I wish that sometimes I can have it, but I don't. And the Creator is saying, I'm going to deal with you as individual, but I also I deal with you as a community. There is a rabbi that used to say, they are evil people, but all the, col- all the community is responsible. And this is very important to understand about this message. A social order. It's going to talk about different areas. And I do not want to take one by one and think, because it's too many things that can. But uh, I want to give you a global idea about what the Creator is trying to teach us. 
first of all, is that the, the most precious thing that he has given us the Behirah of she, the freedom to be ourselves. And when you do not want to be free, you slay yourself. And here is one, I want to bring something to all of us. I have talked about this issue before, but I, now I want to make you a little bit more personal. The first question I would like to ask you is, are you a slave to anything? <laughs> and you're going to see that you just start examining yourself. You're going to see there are certain things that are holding you back. And it's not easy to get out of there. And this is a constant struggle. I had worked too long we, uh, in, in the area of addictions. And I, did, I used to do counseling in that area. And you know, and we will count it days, our, our victories and our freedom. First of all, one week. The second was one month. Then was three months, then was a year, we had celebrations. But we always we were aware that we were struggling. And that we cannot give it the other side because we could fall. And that was a struggle. And you know, there are so many addictions that they don't call it addictions. But sometimes they are worse than the addiction that you see. Are you are addicted to what? What has taken away your freedom and destroy your humanity? And destroying your humanity, you destroy your image before God. This is why the Creator is very clear. Nothing is by imposition, but it's self-awareness and acceptance. I do a lot of counseling, and sometimes I find people that have a certain mental areas of problems. And the first thing they say to them is, you need, and especially you need a professional. Oh, no, I am okay. I don't have anything. Until the person doesn't accept, doesn't recognize that has a problem, cannot receive the cure, cannot get out of that. Because the first thing is we need to be honest with ourselves. And this is the true freedom. It starts in us. What is your type of slavery that you are fighting with? Sometimes we are a slave of the social environment. We are a slave of the, uh, of, of the government or, or the job or whatever. You know, we live under poor fear. and temptations and limitations. And the Creator is trying to tell us, what is your fear? Why are you are so scared about everything? Why are you scared about living? Because it's better, and most of us, we are like that, it's better to be sitting in a chair waiting for somebody else to do it than instead of I do it. How many of us struggle with changes? How many of us we do not like to change things in our lives? 
even if it's negative in us, but we hold it so strong that that makes us even worse. That is the way that I am, and that is the way I want to die. I shall not surrender. This portion, the Creator is talking to us about justice. And it's very interesting. If you cannot do justice with yourself, how can you do justice to others? If you cannot be good to yourself, how can you be good to others? And every little detail that you read here about slavery and little taking away from that is always respecting the other. And how can you respect the other? Start by respecting yourself. If you don't have self-respect, how can you respect others? It's impossible. In which group are you? What type of slavery are you struggling in? And this is going to give us a little bit of light and we can claim to the Creator and help us and we can help, receive help from others too. You, you, you know, uh, you have heard me saying this also before, the, the, the worst lawyer is the one that treats himself his own cases or advises himself and the worst doctor is the one that he treats himself, you know? Why? Because you need opinions of others outside you. You, you are you, your self-counselor. <laughs> Sometimes you are going to commit a lot of mistakes. Don't counsel yourself. Allow others to bring to you ideas. Listen. Be open. You know who are the worst people? The close-minded. And those are what I call it the fanatics. And fanatism is very destructive. Because I always think I am right, and everybody else is wrong. And you are not flexible. We are not flexible. We are fanatics. My way or no way, Jose? Or the highway. Or the highway. Thank you, Baruch. And the Creator is giving us mind to think. Why do we have this precious brain? To waste it? Most of the religions, they teach you that you cannot think. And you cannot act on your own. And you cannot uh, arrive to your own conclusions. You need to follow the crowd. And what God gave us the Shirah of she? What gave us freedom instead of slavery? That doesn't mean that I cannot follow somebody who's telling me the truth. Totally the contrary. You're going to see the, the truth in self, and you, you're going to share it with other people who also share the truth. But not necessarily. It's exactly the same way that you see it. Maybe dif different facets, different tongues. Or oh, I only get close to people who think exactly like I think. How many times? In our Bible studies on the afternoons, on Shabbat, we have had people who have come from different ways of thinking, and, and many of them, they came to put us on the right path. And how quick they lose the temper when you do not accept what they tell you. You listen, you smile to them, and you say to them, very nice, that's the way that you, you think, goodbye. Because we don't think in your way, you know? 
Oh, you are going to be this and you're going to... How many times they have sent me to hell? Because I don't think in the way that they think. That happens in all the religions. If you do not accept their doctrines or their dogmas, what's the first thing that they tell you? You're dead. They love to kill everybody. Here, it's very interesting, you're going to see that there's a lot of killing too in this uh, social order. You do this and you do that, death. You come here, you come there, death. You go here, you go there, death. You, uh, you mock your parents, death. You beat your parents, death. Today, everybody will be dead. Or doing the thing, you kidnap death, everything is death. And the question is why at that time was so strict? And we need to understand. Uh, and we need to see it in, in the perspective of pedagogical understanding. Not to be literalist, but to understand the principle behind this. In other words, what he says is, if you are in a community in which there, there is a, a clear and, and there is an understanding and, and everybody is working for something good, and comes something that wants to destroy that, what you need to do is to eliminate it. To say that that person, you know, You are welcome to, to stay with us, but this is our ways. You don't like it? Go look another place. But don't try to enforce us your ways. And that's very difficult to do that. I have had in this community people that has come specifically and they have stayed here specifically to change us. And after a while, they cannot do it then. I have talked to them privately. And what I say to them, because I, to, to all of them, this, I say something similar. I say, you are wasting your time here. And the only thing that you are creating is interference and uh, a conflict. More conflict than, and, and you're getting upset, and especially upset with me, because I do not accept your ways. And I say, will be better that you go someplace else that they, they think like you. In that way, you have the opportunity to enjoy. But why do you come here to change us? a higher call. Their God told them that we need to change. That's the religion. Because they have this, what I call it, complex. You know? About that they can save you from, from, from yourself. They are the saviors. And the Creator said that you are responsible for your life, not your neighbor. And you as a community, you're responsible to each other. But there needs to be rules of respect. And here is Behirah of Shi. Do you remember I say equal responsibility? You remember? So free will brings to you responsibility. If you, have, you exercise your free will, you are responsible for your actions. Not your neighbor, or not somebody, not somebody else is going to pay for your mistakes.
here in this portion we have the the called the law of ex talion, you know? The 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 law eye for a eye and tooth for a tooth and foot for a foot and leg for a leg and uh, stuck for a stuck and hit for a hit and everything for everything. You know? Well, let me tell you. What it means that? Is, is the creator talking about literalism, literal? Totally the contrary. What's understood? That we are responsible for our actions. And our actions have different grades of responsibility. Some string that you, you can be killed for that. The others, you need to make it right. Do you know that through this area, the idea of the insurance company came out? And there are five areas here, comprehensive areas, that you need to cover. The first is the damage itself. You know? What I created. The second is about taking care of the injury, not the healing part. Because it's important that you, uh, you get well. The third part is about the area of losing your, uh, is that you, you have time of recovering, you know? You need to have the time of recovering and need to be paid for. Loss of your job on this. The other area that they call it is, is about uh, losing uh, your uh, a timing and not only, not only the prestige, uh, but uh, losing faith, that they call it, in damage. And, and these areas, each one of them, come from these scriptures. You know, when, for example, if you're injured, or you have a wreck with, with an automobile, the first thing is they need to pay for reparation of the automobile, no? Secondly, you were, if you had a, a, le, a, le, a, what do you call a, a physical problem, injury, injury. Uh, you you need to go to the hospital and you suffer the consequences. You need to you lose your job. You need to pay for that. Then the time that you needed to go and and, and to to arrange and then, you know all the tragedy. And finally, is for the acceptance that they call it. No, uh, in, in the area of, uh, for example, you know you were aggravated. That, and and that is in modern time. That is the way how the in, insurance companies work on that. All of them has a reason. It, it is to make you you responsible. You know, if you has an ox, say here, and the ox comes and gorges somebody, and you knew that that ox was doing that and you are the owner, you are responsible. How we can do it today and today? What about you have a dog that is, is a really a bad dog? <laughs> I don't know if they're good dogs or bad dogs, but this is a dog Bite. that bites. And you know that bites. What would be the first thing that you You put something in his mouth and you take it out. What about it bite the child or bite the room? You know? And you knew that. What about if that animal killed, killed uh, somebody? And you're the owner and you knew about that. This is how, this is what is there. You know, another thing, for example, if you, you have a, you build a, a wealth and you leave the wealth uncovered, and somebody falls in the world, 
You know, you are responsible. Today, you know, it's very interesting. Also, you have a roof and to build a fence around the roof. You know, today, for example, we have a law that is very interesting mostly of the cities, that you have a swimming pool. You, you need to put a fence around. And even this has been tragedy, the children have died drowning in, in, because they didn't have a fence. Who is responsible for that? The one who owns it. The one who owns it. This is why social uh, uh, ordinances are given by the Creator. But what is the key is here? All of us, we are responsible for our own actions. We cannot blame the neighbor. Again, what the religions teach you, you can do hocus pocus, or you can do this, and you can do that, and, and blame somebody else for your, for your responsibilities. And you know what? The only thing they need to do, I believe. Now I believe. Whatever they tell me that I need to believe, I am free of guilt, free of everything. Now I am, I am good. <coughs> and I can keep doing it, and the only thing I need to do is free of belief, because now I am healed. Today, in the modern times, and, and I want to look at, at this El Mishpatim to our situation today, that we need to apply it to our lives, okay? Because this is the bottom line, Bechira Hoshib. Our Creator is teaching us that He has given us freedom not to be slaves. Our tendency is to be dependent. That is the reason that we fall in the trap to be dependent on something. Okay, that give me this, that give me calm, this is, this is good, I don't like the changes in my life. I am very comfortable the way that I am. Yeah? Don't move this, don't move that. Depending our temperament, depending our ways, you know? And we, we like to be in control, sometimes. But it's so good that I do not need to worry about myself because somebody else is taking care of me. How many people have fallen in that trap to be dependent on others? When the Creator has taught us to be independent. Is very important in the gift that the Creator has given to all of us because that is equal to be responsible for the actions that we take. And I would like to call you and call us as a community to improve each one of us as individuals to be able to give the best of us to others. And you're going to see how our community is going to grow. But uh, if we think only what is for me, and I don't think about that the reason I am here is in order to be server to others, to serve others. And this is the problem that we have had with the Ten Commandments. I mentioned last week. We keep the Ten Commandments to ourselves. And we commit the biggest mistake not to share them with the rest of the people. And I mentioned in the last blog that we invented this idea that if you're not Jewish, you don't need to follow the Ten Commandments. We give you only seven. Easy to take because you are not as good as we are. You only have seven. And invented the no hide. 
And you want to be good? Because this is for us. And the only reason that Israel has been called is to be Orlegoyim, to be light to the world. And if Israel cannot be light to the world, Israel seeks to exist. Let's, let's see about how wonderful is our God, how, how great he is that he has given us such a beautiful, beautiful Torah, beautiful Ten Commandments, basic things. You know, with us, according to our Jewish uh, sages, you know, our sages, we have 613 laws. And I'm going to tell you, 603 are included in the 10. It's only an application. If you learn the Ten Commandments, you made it. Shabbat Shalom.